Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Can we stand to our feet in the house of God today? It might be a little nasty on the outside, but it's great here on the inside. Amen. Anybody here love the name of Jesus? Anybody know the name of Jesus today? Has that name been applied to your life? Aren't you glad you've been buried in that name? Healed by that name, delivered in that name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the name, Jesus. Name above all names, the one who reigns forever. He's still the same. Praise the name. us now. Praise the name. Praise the name above all names. The, the one who reigns. He's still the same. present help in the time of trouble as close as the mention of his name hallelujah sing it now every nation every, every nation, nation every tribe and tongue creation, what we proclaim, we proclaim
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is so good to have each and every one of you here for Sunday morning service. If it is your first time in the building, I want you to know you are welcome home and we love you already. Right now, this is what we call family time. Step out across the aisles. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. If you see somebody you don't know, make sure they feel welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Truth Chapel. As you're making your way back to your seat, you may be seated. Give somebody a high five on the way and tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. Welcome to all of our guests again. Welcome home. And we love you already. And we're so glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. So thankful for um, such a great service at 9 o'clock this morning and looking forward to a great service again today. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. The weather outside was very yucky this morning and it's gotten a little better as the day's going on, but we're going to have a good time in here today. Amen. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Court and this is my beautiful wife, Amanda, and we are so blessed to pastor this amazing church that you find yourself in today, Truth Chapel, and we're so glad you're here. And I have a few announcements, but before I get to all that, I'm going to have my wife take a moment and greet you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully you are good and prepared for Valentine's Day on Tuesday. Amen. Yes. No, it doesn't no look confident. promising. There was no confidence in that. <laughs> if you are not, we have strawberries in the foyer, Okay. <laughs> If you have pre-ordered your strawberries from our amazing youth group, um, they have them ready for you in the foyer. There are a very few extra dozen left, so you don't want to leave without strawberries today. So when church is over, make your way to the foyer. Don't go before church is over and be snacking in the middle of service. Wait till the end. Wait until church is over. Um, the Lord is so good, you know, and it's good to come to the house of the Lord and feel the love of God through his people. We're so thankful for unity. Um, quick announcement this morning, February 18th, Saturday, February 18th at 6.30. Ladies, we are doing a game night over in the student center. You do not want to miss it. I encourage you to be here. Is that this Saturday? It is this Saturday. Man, y'all, we're almost, we're going to be all the way through February before we blink. Wow, time is flying. This Saturday, when you're having fun. Yes, it does. Saturday in the Student Center at 6.30. Be there. Amen. Amen. Is that it? Hey, would you be my Valentine? I will. Okay. Absolutely. I got some Absolutely. chocolate-covered strawberries upstairs. Yesterday. Yesterday was 25 years. 25 years. Not our, not our wedding anniversary, but the anniversary of when we started dating. Mm -hmm. February 11th, 1998. 1998. 25 years. What were you thinking? <laughs> I'm not sure, but. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yes, and she's put up with me for this long, so I'm not all that bad. Um, and uh, we're blessed to be with you today. And I want to just give you a few announcements. I want to make you aware that this coming Wednesday night, 
This coming Wednesday night is our annual business meeting, and you don't want to miss the business meeting. I know when, when, when we say business meeting, it sounds dreary and boring and a bunch of numbers, but not here. We're going all out pep rally, wear your favorite sports outfit. We're going to have headbands. We're going to have banners. It's going to be crazy because we're going to celebrate what the Lord has done at Truth Chapel. Amen. And yes, we're going to handle business. We're going to take care of business while we're here, but we're going to have a good time doing it because I don't believe in boring church services at all. So let's just, let's have fun at the business meeting. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be great. So that's this coming Wednesday night. Don't miss it. And then I want to make you aware of the last Sunday in March, March the 26th, the last Sunday in the month of March is going to be our friends and family Sunday. Friends and Family Sunday. We're going to have some gifts to give away. We're going to have a bunch of stuff going on. You don't want to miss this. And so be prepared. Go ahead and start inviting your family, your cousins, Pookie and them. Invite everybody to come out on the 26th. We have an amazing time, and you definitely want to be on the house in the house on that Sunday. It's going to be, it's going to be great, and we're looking forward to it. And um, my last announcement is, uh, well, I don't have to do that in this service because it's only for the 9 o'clock. I was going to talk to the covenant leadership, but that's at the nine o'clock service. Look, I got the services mixed up in my head. It's all good. We're going to have a good time. I will announce this again today that when we dismiss our classes, before I come up to preach, we we'll dismiss our classes. Our six to 11 year olds can go to my left out those double doors and the five to three year olds can go up my right on these double doors and they'll have a great time in class today. And we're going to announce that just a few more times. Everybody understands what we're doing. And as they go out the doors, they'll be taken to class very safely and taken care of today and I want to give a huge shout out to all of our teachers and all of our Sunday school there's been a lot of changes in the last couple of weeks and they have done an amazing job getting it together from registering them to teaching them has been great and I'm so thankful and so proud of them today now before brother uh, Pastor George comes and takes up an offering we're going to do something very 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 special Pastor Drew would you come praise the Lord Truth Chapel get to honor a volunteer of the month for the month of February? Absolutely. We had a great session this morning in Covenant Leadership talking about volunteers and um, talking about, you know, what it means to be a leader at Truth Chapel. And this individual that we're recognizing today is definitely a leader. Wouldn't you say, Pastor Chavis? He's pretty awesome. He, yep. So many things. He helps you out every now and again. He does a lot for me. A lot of times he'll just walk up to me out of the blue and just say, hey, you need anything today? I got you, whatever you need. It, he's always there and in, in every situation. And what I love about this particular individual, we talked about this today, is he brings energy. He brings integrity. He brings passion to whatever he does. And without further ado, we want to recognize today Brother Bryson Hewlin. Bryson? Come on up, B. Bryson! Bryson's pretty amazing. If you don't know this gentleman, you need to know him. You need to meet him. And you know what I talked about in, in Covenant Leadership this morning is I love whenever we honor a volunteer, you people go crazy. And you start cheering and you clap. And that's called what? Unity! I love how we just live the vision and the mission around here, right? But let me be quiet. Bryson, in grateful recognition of your valuable contribution in volunteering your time and efforts and for the extraordinary service you provide to Truth Chapel, Bryson Hewling is recognized today as a servant leader who truly makes a difference. We love you, Bryson. Love you so much. the Lord everybody let's give brother Bryson another hand clap of praise volunteer at this time if our ushers will make their way down to the front I have two great young men the Scott brothers gonna help us pray this morning get your ties out get your offering but before we do that I have a scripture this morning I want to read in your here Luke 6 and 38 says give and it shall be given unto you good measure somebody say good measure Pressed down, shaking together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure that you give, it will be measured back to you. This is a promise from God that he doesn't need a large amount. Somebody say a large amount. 
but will honor you generously in obedience and whatever you give. He can do a miracle to multiply, pour out blessings, and to overflow your lives with many others. Amen. Get your tithes and off now. We're going to pray. together. Anybody got a song in your heart this morning? Are you ready to worship?
have a need in your body we believe that Jesus is here he's paid the price he's taken the stripes for your healing and he is here to help heal you and help you this morning sister Daisy let's continue to pray for her and also sister Daniels had to go into the hospital earlier this week she's home now but let's continue to pray for her friends and families that you know that need a touch some of them have the flu some of them are sick but let's continue to ask the Lord to pray and continue to ask the Lord to heal. I believe that he is going to heal. He's going to touch. If you want to be anointed with oil, please come down. Let the elders anoint you and the prayer of faith will save the sick. I believe this. Truth Chapel, can you lift your hands right now? Let's begin to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking those stripes for our healing. Lord God, I pray, Lord, right now that you go into the rooms of the hospitals, that you go into the rooms that are watching, Lord God, online right now, that you begin to touch, that you begin to heal, that you begin to mend the mind, the brokenhearted. We're going to give you praise and glory and honor, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As we're praying, I'd like some brethren to come join our brother Jeff right here. The Jeff Moore will be having a surgery. Uh, this coming Tuesday, we'll be praying for him. The Lord will touch him. It's so good to see Sister Daisy in the house. Sister Daisy, we continually praying for you. Good to see you in the house today. Um, as they're praying, I like Brother Keenan. Brother Keenan Dobbins, would you come down and would you stand right here? I'm going to ask some of the ministry to join me. Today is Brother Keenan Dobbins' last Sunday at True Chapel for a while. This coming Tuesday, he'll be headed to Berlin, Germany where he'll be going to school there and also uh, assisting in some ministry there, the ministry team there in Berlin. And I know the Lord has called him to do this, and I know it's a great opportunity for him. And But I want him to go with the blessing of the church, and I want him to go under the authority and the power of the church and also go under the protection of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if some of the ministry would gather around, Brother Keenan and Sister Dobbins, you come as well. I know Brother Reed is here as well. Let's pray for this whole family as... Uh, their son goes across the waters and does a work for the Lord that God will protect him, lead him, guide him, and order his steps. Church, would you stretch your hands towards Brother Keenan and would you help us pray today for him in the name of Jesus? Lord, we pray that you would go with him, Lord. We pray that you would order his steps, that you would protect his mind and protect his spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would walk with him and talk with him, that you would lead him, you would guide him. You would give him opportunity for ministry and to reach, oh God. I pray, Lord, you would open doors for him and give him favor with God and man. Watch over him, protect him, oh God. His spirit, his body, his mind, his health. Lord, I pray you would go before him and I pray you would prepare the way. 
And Lord, I pray that the blessing of this church will be upon him. As we bless him now to do your work and to do your will, may the blessing of this church be upon him and may the power of this assembly follow him there, Lord, to touch and to heal and to restore. We speak it now in the name of Jesus. Let it be so and done over him today. In Jesus' name. And if you believe the church, if you believe that the power of the Lord is going to go with them, would you just clap your hands? Amen. And worship with us as we sing.
in this house. Come on, just for a few moments right here. You want to clap your hands and add your voice with it. Oh. Come on, we believe. We believe that the Lord can do it exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or even think. He can do it. Not only for the nations, but for right here in Loganville. Amen. For right here in this community, that Jesus is the difference. Jesus is the answer. Somebody just one more time, would you lift your voice and would you praise him? Come on, glorify him in this house before we move on from this moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> what an honor to be in the house of the Lord today, to feel his power and feel his presence. We had an amazing 9 o'clock service, a great crowd. I honestly think we had more people in the 9 o'clock than we have here right now in this service. And uh, that's, that's amazing. It's awesome. Even with the bad weather this morning, what a great turnout. And Man, we had a we had good church. And, amen. We have a good church right now. I thought the Lord was going to speak to us here in just a moment. As you remain standing, I want to dismiss our classes to their uh, perspective classes that can be dismissed today are six to 11 year olds out my left hand your right hand door they're going to go have a great time in class and then my three to five year olds out my right hand this right hand door uh, your left hand door and they're going to go to class and have a great time today amen I want to say again how grateful I am for an amazing Sunday school team that have stepped up to the plate with the new two services and shifted and auto-corrected and just made it happen and it's been it's been a blessing and it's going to get better and I want you to know that the last Sunday of this month the last Sunday of this month is our kids Sunday so what we're doing is the last Sunday of every month will be kids Sunday and all of our all of our older kids our 6 to 11 year olds they're starting church over there they're going to have a full service and I believe that this 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 month they have a massive deal plan all I know is going to be a lot of balloons and uh, uh, Shelby Smith's going to be coming in and doing a um, uh, weekend with us with the kids on that Sunday. And this is going to be crazy. Uh, so you want to make sure your kids are here on the last Sunday this month because they're going to have a blast. And uh, here's what I believe. I believe there's some kids going to be receiving the Holy Ghost. I believe there's some kids going to be giving their life to the Lord. Some kids going to get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that can happen uh, in the, the last Sunday this month. I believe it can happen today. Uh, but I know it can happen then as well. And what an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord with you today. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me very quickly? The book of Numbers 21. The book of Numbers chapter 21. I'm going to begin in verse 5. Amen. I felt this on my spirit this week. Um, just a simple message. Um, it's a simple message, but I believe it's the solution to everything. It's a simple word, but I do believe it is a solution to all life's problems. Amen. It is the solution. It's so good to have Brother Jeff Crawford in the house with us today. Visiting. Man, good to see you at home. <laughs> it's good to have him with us today. Numbers 21, I'm going to begin in verse 5. When you have it, just say, I got it. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, neither any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. 
And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And I'd like to turn your attention really quickly to the book of John chapter 3. John 3 and one verse, two verses, 13 and 14. John chapter 3 beginning in verse 13 says this. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Even as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And this morning, if you will allow me just a few moments, I want to preach to you today on this subject. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, we love you. And we're so thankful for your precious name, the name that is above every name. The only name given among men whereby we must be saved. And I pray today you would use this word to encourage us, grow us, and mature us. And we will give you all the glory and we'll give you all the praise for it. Help us today not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory for it. And would you lift your voice, church, and would you shout in Jesus' name? And the church said, Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of the Lord today. <clears throat> Amen. I want to start this sermon today by uh, making you aware, and I know that many of you are probably aware, but for those that may not be aware, I want to make you aware that our world is in a mess. Uh, we, uh, we, we're in big trouble. Um, the world is falling apart around us, and I know that you know, here in America, we, we, we live in a certain type of insulation that uh, some of this uh, world problems don't really affect us here at home. And sometimes it seems like everything's just going okay and going well. But the truth of the matter is, is that the world is falling apart around us. And even in our own country, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, we're in some trouble. The world is in a very volatile place right now. It could take just one event, one moment, to set the whole thing in disarray. Um, I, I, just following the news this week, you know, earthquakes overseas killing thousands of people, whole uh, um, cities being leveled to nothing, uh, watching videos of people um, standing on the balconies of their buildings as the building collapses around them, and just seeing that happen and not really hearing a whole lot about it on the news just because it's, it's not big enough it's not bigger than the balloon. The earthquake that killed 5,000 people in a day wasn't bigger than the balloon that was floating in the sky that may or may not had a Russian or Chinese spy camera on it. Who knows? What are they taking pictures of anyway? What can we really see? It's a mess. The world's in trouble. We see the unrest. We feel the division. We feel the tension um, I know most of us don't even watch the news because if you do, it's just, it's a doomsday. It's just, it just makes you feel awful. You, you wake up in the morning and you hear it. You go to bed hearing it and it's just negative. And nothing looks good, nothing sounds good. And if you know the Bible at, of any level, you know we are living in the end times. Somebody said amen. It's here. Now, I want to tell you though that my, my message today is not about the problem. I just, I just wanted to let you know that there was a problem. But I'm, I, I'm not a problem-thinking person. I don't really think in, 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 in the line of problems. I'm, I'm more of a solution-driven person. I, that's the way I think. It, it aggravates my wife sometimes because she'll want to be telling me the problem and while she's yet speaking. I'm, I'm given the solution for the problem. I haven't even heard the whole problem yet. I'm just a, a solutions-type person and... Uh, I get in trouble sometimes because I think, I think in terms of solutions. If, if there's a problem, my mind automatically wants to go to a solution. I don't really dwell on the problem as much as I dwell on the solution because I, I, I see the problem, I hear the problem. Okay, there's a problem. Now, how do we solve it and how do we get it fixed? And I want you to know that today there is a problem in our world today, but I'm not here to really uh, uh, point out and, 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 and bring to the forefront all of the problems, I think if all you got to do is go home today and turn on the news and all the problems will be right there in front of you. But today I want to tell you about the solution. 
There is a solution to the problem today, and I know y'all probably not going to shout, and you're probably not going to clap and say amen today, because it's really so simple, and all of y'all know it. The problem is the rest of the world don't really know it, and they need to know it from people who know it, because here's what we know. The solution has always been and always will be Jesus. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the answer. Not my religion, not my philosophy, not my theology, not my denomination, not my movement. No, 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 no. Jesus is the answer. And I got Jesus, so I got what the world needs. Jesus has always been the answer. There, there, there is no place that Jesus cannot make a difference. Uh, there is no problem that Jesus cannot solve. There is no mountain that Jesus cannot climb over. There is no disease that Jesus cannot heal. There is no night that Jesus cannot bring light to it. I don't care what you're facing today. I don't care what is going on in your world. I don't care how big the problem may be. There is a man. Can I introduce you today to a man named Jesus? Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he's the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The answer is still Jesus. The problem solver is still Jesus. The healer is still Jesus. For it pleased God that in him would dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's all in him. The healer's in him. The provider's in him. The peace is in him. Hey, he's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. And he's the fairest of 10,000. He's that wise counselor. He's that good shepherd. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He's the first and the last. He was and he is and he is to come. The Bible said the prophet saw him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Hey, hallelujah. He's the one that will open the book. And he's the one that can open your life, open your mind, open your spirit, bring you out, bring you in, bring you up and bring you down. Whatever you got, Jesus is still the answer. Yeah. For too long now, we've been thinking that the church is the, is the, church is the answer. Uh, if you come to church, then that's the answer. And listen, I love the church. I'm so glad for the church. And when Jesus comes back, guess what he's coming back for? The church. Thank God for the church. I'm glad they're in the church. But the church is not the answer. The church is just the boat. I said the church is just the capsule. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The, 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 the capsule, the bride is not the answer. The answer is still Jesus. Jesus will get you on the boat and Jesus will keep you on the boat. It's still Jesus. It's still Jesus. And the Bible says that the children of Israel got in trouble. And I, I understand the problem. The problem is, 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 is God brought us out for what? He brought us out to kill us. He brought us out of this trouble to, to, to ruin us. This doesn't seem, it doesn't feel like victory. This doesn't feel like freedom. Because now we're out here. We got no food. We got no water. We're angry. And the Bible says that they got so mad they started talking against God. They said, God has done us wrong. They started talking against Moses. Moses has done us wrong. And the Bible said that God didn't like that and he sent serpents among them. And those serpents began to bite them. And the Bible said many of them died. And so the people came to Moses and they confessed, we've sinned. Uh, we, we've been talking about you behind your back and we've been talking about God and, and we're in trouble. And the Bible says that Moses prayed for the people. Amen. Thank God for a man of God that'll pray for you. Uh, thank God for a man of God that'll call out your name and say, Lord, help him. He said, please take away the serpents from among us. That's what they wanted. They said, take away the serpent. Take away the problem. But when Moses prayed, the Lord said unto him, make thee a fiery serpent. I will not remove the serpents. I will not remove the problem. I'm just going to give you a solution. The problem is still going to be there. But when you get that fiery serpent made, the Bible said he made it out of brass. And he took that fiery serpent and he lifted it up upon a pole. And he said, when someone gets bitten, all they have to do is look upon the serpent and they will live. I will not remove the problem. I'll just give you a solution. Oh, hallelujah. Can I, can I help somebody today and let you know God is not about to remove the problem. The Bible tells us this, that the, in the end times, the world, the culture will wax worse and worse. It ain't about to get better. 
Oh, no, no, no. God is not here to remove the serpents. Uh, he's here to give us a solution to the serpents. Uh, he's not here to remove sin or take away strife uh, or take away trouble or take away trial. That's not who he is. Uh, he said, what I'll do is I'll give you an answer for the strife. I'll give you an answer for the trial. I'll give you an answer for the problem. I'll give you an answer for the disease. I'll give you an answer for the addiction. Uh, I'll give you an answer for the change that binds you. And the answer is and always will be Jesus. Somebody shout that name. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus is the solution. He didn't remove the serpents. He just brought a solution. And he said, all you got to do is look on it. And when you see it, it'll heal you. When you see it, it'll bring you life. When you look upon it and you fix your eyes upon him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, when you fix your eyes on Jesus. Seeing Jesus is all that really matters. Yeah, yeah, you got to see him. And when you see him in his full glory, when you see him up on that pole, he said, if I be lifted up, oh, hallelujah, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Black men, brown men, white men, rich men, poor men, educated men, illiterate men, it didn't all men. When I'm lifted up, you see, when you preach Jesus as the solution, he's the answer for all peoples in all places. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw drug addicts. If I be lifted up, I'll draw prostitutes. If I be lifted up, I'll draw the destitute. If I be lifted up, I'll bring them all in. The addicted and the wounded and the broken and the rich and the poor and everybody in between. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Because it doesn't matter where you are, where you're from, or where you live. If you look to Jesus, he is your answer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible tells us this of one of the most poorest men that we'll ever meet. Poor man. He was poor. He lived in the Gadarenes. He had nothing. All he had to his name was a legion of demons living inside of his mind. Yeah, they had a name, Legion. And they vexed him day and night. He ran around naked. Chains hanging off of him because Every time they would try to chain him up, probably for his own safety, he would break the chains. He would tear the chain. The Bible said he would pluck the chains asunder. He lived in the caves with the dead people. We, we've never met a man more poor than him. He was poor in spirit. He was poor in money. And he was poor in mind. The devil had taken everything from him. And he lived in the caves, naked in his clothing, screaming every night. The Bible said he cut himself all the time and he lived among the dead people. But when the feet of Jesus touched the, the, the land of the Gadarenes, uh, something happened inside of him. And the Bible says he exited the cave and when he did, the Bible says when he saw Jesus, oh hallelujah, when he saw Jesus, all he had to do was see him. All he had to do was put his eyes on him. When he saw Jesus, he ran to him. And the same devil that held him in that cave couldn't hold him from Jesus. The same enemy that broke the chains couldn't keep him back from Jesus. I don't care where you at or what you got going on. When you see Jesus, every chain has to let you go. Every demon has to release his grip. Every addiction has to be bound by the power of seeing Jesus Whoa! the same devil that cut him and the same devil that wanted to kill him couldn't stop him from falling on his knees and worshiping the one true God the Bible said he worshiped him Woo! he worshiped him full of the devil worshiping Oh, he wasn't delivered yet. He gets delivered in the next sentence. But he wasn't delivered yet. He was a worshiper and he was still vexed with the devil. I know some of you come in here and you're like, you know what? When I get right, I'll worship. When I get free, I'll worship. When God makes a way out of no way, I'll worship. But this man proved to us that you can be full of the devil, broken, wounded, and destitute, and still be a worshiper. What you got going on today? I don't care what it is you got going on. When Jesus is in the room, you can be a worshiper. You don't know what I'm going through, Pastor. Jesus don't care. Worship. You don't know what I'm facing. Worship. You don't know my battle. Worship. You don't know my brokenness. Worship. You don't know my addiction. Worship. You don't know my pain. Worship. 
Hey. Because when he worshiped, Jesus set him free. Jesus set him free. Jesus, all he did was see him. He didn't need no Bible study. He just saw him. He didn't need no education. He just saw him. This is the beauty of Jesus is that when, once you come to him, yes, he'll, he'll clothe you and he'll put you in your right mind. Absolutely. God has a process for you once you see him. The Bible said when they saw him again, he was clothed and in his right mind. That's the, that's the redemptive lift of Jesus. But when you see him, you don't need any kind of prerequisite. I know you may be sitting here thinking, well, I, I've never been to this church. Well, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, I, I'm not a member here. Jesus don't care if you're a member here. Come on down to the altar, baby. Uh, well, 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 uh, I, don't, I don't have no pedigree. Jesus don't care nothing about your pedigree. Come on down to the altar. Yeah. That was the poorest man. He was so poor. But he said, I'll draw all men to me. If you see me, I'll draw all men to me. Yeah, he would say, well, well, that's the poor man, but, but what about the rich man? Oh, hallelujah. The rich man wanted to see him too. Not only was he rich, but in Luke 19, the Bible tells us he was rich. He was the chief publicans. He was politically powerful. He was, his stature was powerful. And the Bible says and he was rich. Now, I don't know. Today, we say things like, oh, he rich. But when the Bible calls you rich, you rich. The Bible says he was powerful. He was the chief of the publicans, positionally, politically powerful, and he was rich. But he wanted to see Jesus. He said, I got everything I need, but I need to see Jesus. I, I just want to see what they're talking about. Something inside of this man by the name of Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. We know that he was a little man, and when we preach about Zacchaeus, we just preach about his size. But let me preach to you about his position. He was politically powerful. He was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He don't care. Yeah, he's small. Don't matter. I got more money than all of y'all. I'll be little and rich. You could be tall and poor. Don't matter to me. I'll buy me some stack shoes. I'll walk around here. I'm rich. You know what I'm saying? He was so rich that the Bible had to mention that he was rich. That's how rich he was. Is the Bible thought that it would, Luke, when he was writing the book, thought that it would be pertinent to add into this place that he was powerful among the publicans and he was rich. That's how rich he was. But he wanted to see him. He had to see Jesus. And when he went to see Jesus in Luke 19, the Bible says that he could not, couldn't see him because he was little of stature. There were too many things in front of him that were bigger than him and blocked his view of Jesus. But the Bible says he left there and he went ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says in verse 4, and he ran before. Sometimes you got to run before. Sometimes the only way to see Jesus is get out of the crowd. Pull away from everybody else. Separate yourself a little bit. Don't go where he is. Go where I know he's going to be. Hey, listen. I, I'm going to put a little plug in here. That's why being in the house of God is a good thing. Because throughout the week sometimes, I can't find him really. But I know where he's going to be. I know he, listen, it may be that first song, it may be that second song, but I, I'm, I'm going to go where I know he's going to be. Because where two or three are gathered in what? My name. I will be there in the midst of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he runs on before, and the Bible says he climbs up in a sycamore tree. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, he did. He climbed up in that sycamore tree because he needed to see Jesus. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. Man, that's a good word. If you can't preach Luke 19, you can't preach just ain't in you. You go, go do something else. Go, go, go work at a grocery store or something. You can't, you can't preach. Because when the Bible says 
that Zacchaeus wanted to see him. And so he put himself in position to see him. But turns out when Jesus got to the place, he saw him. Jesus said, you looking for me? I'm looking for you. <laughs> I preached here just a couple weeks ago. He's looking for the lookers. God's always looking for the lookers. If you're looking for me, guess what? I'm looking for you. And I can find you a lot better than you can find me. If you're looking to see me, I'm looking to see you. Uh, can't, li li listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a student of the word and, 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 and I love the Bible. And if you ever read that story about Jehoshaphat in Chronicles 20, that Jehoshaphat is facing all those enemies. The Bible said that all the enemies came and Jehoshaphat was afraid. And the Bible says this in, in, in that chapter of, uh, I, I believe it's 1 Chronicles or 2 Chronicles 20, the, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. And he got all the people together and he said, I want y'all to pray and fast because we in trouble. And so they prayed and fasted. And they, and they put themselves in position to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat called a holy assembly, pulled them all together to the tabernacle. And he said, let's all pray together. And they prayed. And they said, Lord, are you not the God of our fathers? Did, did you not promise us this land? Ain't you the one who said, we didn't say this. You said this, Lord. They reminded God of who he was and reminded God of the promises that he had made. And then the Bible says that Jehoshaphat ended the prayer by saying this. He said, Lord, we come to you. He said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That was the last thing that was said in the prayer. That's how Jehoshaphat ended the prayer. He said, Lord, we do not know what to do, but our eyes upon you. And a holy hush fell over the crowd. And Jehaziel began to prophesy. The, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord fell upon Jehaziel. And Jehaziel began to prophesy. Here's what he said. Fear not, for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. That's good, but let me tell you what's better. What's better is what the word Jehaziel means. Because Jehaziel, that name means something. Here's what it means. It means the eyes of the Lord are upon you. So the last thing Jehoshaphat said was, Lord, I don't know what to do, but we're looking at you. And God spoke to a man whose name meant I'm looking at you too. Well, you can't make this stuff up. The Bible is good like that. It's cohesive. I said, the Bible is cohesive. They said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but we're looking for you. And he said, if you're looking for me, I'm looking at you. And this battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. I want to tell somebody today, if you'll just look for him, he'll look for you. You ought to say it today, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I'm looking for you. And the Lord said, well, I'm looking for you too. I'm looking for the eyes of the Lord. Search the earth to and fro, seeking who he may show himself strong to. Somebody ought to shout it right now. You ought to shout, Jesus, I'm looking. Look upon Jesus. Now I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I promise I am. Don't hold me to it. Who, who'll give me five more minutes? Who'll give me five more minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right. Woo, thank you, Jesus. That's enough. What's what Jesus said when he saw him in the tree? Jesus came to the place. He looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must abide at thy house. All I wanted to do was see him. I didn't know I was going to get to stay with him. All I wanted to do was see him. I didn't know he was going to come to my home and make some changes and turn some things around. All I wanted to do was see him. See, this is the power of, the, of, the, of Christ upon that tree. It's the power of Jesus when you look at him. You, listen, you can look at him and you can see him in all of his glory. You can look at him and you can see him on the right hand of the Father. You can look at him and see the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You can see the lion and the lamb. You can see all kinds of things. But when you look at Jesus hanging on that tree and you know what he did for you, he bled and died and gave his life that you might be free again when you see him like that he'll say I want to come home with you there's some things I want to change in your life there's some things I want to make right in your life there's some broken things I want to put back together and there's some things that have held you that I want to break yeah Jesus say well Pastor Chavis I'm 
I'm neither poor nor rich, but I'm full of sin. I'm so full of it. I'm full of darkness. What, what would Jesus want to do with a man like me? What would Jesus want to do with a person like me? Full of sin, full of brokenness. I look to Jesus, but when I look to him, I see him in his perfection, and I see that I can never live up to that. You're seeing him the wrong way. When I look at Jesus, I see that he is almighty God and he's powerful and I don't know if he would have anything to do with a lowly person like me. That's not how Jesus wants you to see him today. Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 5 that there was a leprous man. Watch what the Bible says in Luke 5 and 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of of leprosy, full. The details are in the scripture. We all know that leprosy is a small disease that starts small and it works its way through the body. It starts as, as just a small sore or a rash that will not go away. We know this in the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus tells us about this, this disease called leprosy and how it starts small, just a spot. And that spot will turn red and scab over, and, but it has no pain. And so after a while, if, if they will try the purification process. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. They'll, they'll try the purification process. If it doesn't work and it continues to go and go and go, then that person is considered leprous, leaving their family, leaving their home, going to a colony full of lepers, and then they live the rest of their life in exile because they're lepers. This man had had leprosy for a long time. I know it because he was full of leprosy. It was all in him. It was all over him. Leprosy had had its way in his life already. He wasn't a little leprous. He was fully leprous. And watch what it says in Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, uh, he just saw. When he put his eyes on Jesus, something happened. And we, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And verse 13 tells us what Jesus did. He put forth his hand and touched him. Jesus broke the law of leprosy because he weren't supposed to touch a leprous man. To touch a leprous man was a death wish. To touch a leprous man was against Levitical law. It could not be touched. And if this man was full of leprosy, then there's no telling how many years he had been without the touch of another human being, without the warmth of a hug or the satisfaction of a handshake. He lost it when he became leprous. And now he's full of leprosy, so his whole life now has been left. He probably couldn't even remember what it felt like to be touched. And Jesus could have spoke a word. Jesus could have said, be healed. He'll do that. He'll do that to the 10. He didn't touch the 10. He just spoke them. He just spoke a word to the 10, and they all left. And when they went on their way, they were healed, and one returned with thanksgiving in his heart. But he didn't do that for this man who was full of the leprosy. For this man, that he stretched forth his hand. And he touched him. Uh, so I don't care what you sit in this building with today. Pain and sorrow and sin from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You may say, Pastor Chavis, it's not that I'm a sinner. It's that I'm full of sin. I've been sinning for a long time. I'm a professional sinner. I've been walking this way for a minute. This isn't my first rodeo. I want to tell you that Jesus has a touch for you today. All you got to do is see him. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. He's that sacrifice for sin. Oh. He's that sacrifice for sin. It's so good. And, and I, really, I'm, I'm really about to close. This is the last thing I'm going to say. But it's too good to let it go by because if you, if you go back to Leviticus and you look up the law of leprosy, there is an atonement for leprosy. There is, a, there is an atonement for leprosy. Here's the atonement. I'm going to break it down for you real fast. 
the atonement for leprosy is this. If a man hath leprosy, let him show himself to the priest. The priest will take two doves, two turtle doves, and he will take one of the turtle doves. He will kill it in an earthen pot. He will let it run over the water. He will take the blood from the dead turtle dove, sprinkle it upon the live turtle dove, and let him go. Ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost when I said it. Covered by the blood, and he let me go. <laughs> He died. Where did he die? In an earthen vessel. A man. He was a man like as me. Tempted in all points like as me. And he, mm, the water and the blood. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Dipped in the water, covered in the blood. He gave his life for my ransom. He was all God and all man. He was everything I needed and more. He covered, so when Jesus touched that leprous man it was more than just a touch no 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 it was a touch from the atoning dove it was the touch from the atoning dove my blood is upon you you can go free I'll die I'll die I'm the one that would face the cross I'm the one that will bleed and die Lord if it be thy will let this cup pass from me but nevertheless not my will but thy will be done I'm the one that will die in an earthen vessel and water will flow from my side now be the atonement and so when you look upon Jesus you have to see him as the atoning Jesus oh yeah one day we will look upon him for eternity because we will go to the city where the lamb is the light oh hallelujah and the bible says we will see him face to face we will see the lamb one day. We'll see him in his glory, but today you have to see him in his sacrifice. Today you cannot look upon him in his glory. I must look upon him with the crown of thorns that he wore on his head so that I could have the mind of Christ. If I'm going to see him today, I have to see him bruised for my transgressions, wounded for my iniquities, and my, 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 my healing is in his stripes. My healing is in his wounds. That's why he's the wonderful counselor because he already knows what you've been through and he can and counsel you because he knows all things. Oh yes when you see him today you can't see him there. You gotta look up and see him hanging on that cross. Every sin that you ever committed set upon his shoulders. He was that perfect lamb. He was that dove of Leviticus. He was the lamb of Exodus. It's Jesus. Who am I preaching to today? I don't care if you're the rich man, the poor man, or the man full of leprosy. There is a Jesus that wants to heal you, redeem you, bring you out, bring you up, and bring you through. Look upon Jesus. That's what they said by the gate beautiful when he wanted money. He said, silver and gold have we none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Would you stand with me as the music comes? Oh, Somebody just say the name as you're standing up. Just say the name. Just say the name, Jesus. Say the name. Uh, can I tell you today, I know, I, know that we're, I know that we're apostolic and I know that we're Pentecostal. And that's, uh, you know, I don't really get caught up in all those. If you've been here long enough, you know I don't get caught up in all those titles and stuff. I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm an apostolic because I follow the apostles' doctrine and I consider myself to be a Pentecostal because I've experienced what they experienced at Pentecost. We, get, we draw a lot of our belief systems and we focus a lot of the birth of the church. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But can I just mess with your theology just a little bit today? I don't, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings here today, but I want to just mess with your theology. And I want to tell you today that repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost is not the message of Acts chapter 2. That's not, not the message. 
I'm a firm believer today that the message of Acts chapter 2 is Jesus. Because when the men said, what is this? Peter said, this is that. This is what the prophet Joel spoke about. That in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And he said, this Jesus, he preaches Jesus to him. He shows him how David spoke of Jesus. How the prophets spoke of the Messiah. He preached Jesus to them. And then he ended it by saying, this Jesus, whom you've crucified, God hath made Lord. He preached Jesus to them. And when they saw Jesus, when they looked past Peter, and they looked past the disciples, and they looked past it all, and they just saw Jesus there, knowing that he was the Messiah, knowing that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, knowing that everything that they had been taught in their Jewish lives culminated in the man Christ Jesus, they said, what shall we do and repent, be baptized, and be filled was the altar call to the message. The message was Jesus. That was the message. Listen. Repenting of your sins, being baptized in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost, that is not the message. That is the result. The result of a good conscience towards God. That's what Peter would tell us. It is the result of a good conscience towards God. When I hear Jesus, I want to repent of my sins. I want to turn from my, my wicked ways. When I see Jesus, it makes me want to be free and clean. When I see Jesus, I see an exit strategy out of my addiction and brokenness into a, his light, his marvelous light. When I see Jesus, I see a way out of my problem and into his light. That's what I see when I see Jesus. When Peter preached that day, he preached Jesus. When Philip preached in Acts chapter 8 to the Samaritans, you know what he preached? Jesus. The Bible said he, when he went to Samaria, he preached Jesus unto them. And they were all baptized. Even the witches got baptized. The warlocks were lined up at the baptismal pool because Jesus would reach anybody. They were baptized in his name. They were baptized. That's what he, pre he preached Jesus. And when Jesus finally dealt with Peter and his spirit against anybody who wasn't a Jew, and he showed Peter, he said, Peter, don't call unclean what I've called clean. And Peter said, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. And he went to Cornelius' house. When he got to Cornelius' house, what did he preach? He didn't even mention the Holy Ghost. He didn't even mention baptism. Wasn't even in the message. He just preached Jesus. Huh. And as he preached Jesus to that family, who it was too powerful for him. Yeah. There, there was such a spirit there of, of Jesus in the room. They couldn't even wait for the altar call. They couldn't even wait for the pastor to say, the altar is open. No, no, right in the middle of the message, that family began to speak with new tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Jews said, what? They were flabbergasted. He said, what? what? What just happened? Peter said, we ought to baptize them because they received the Holy Ghost like as we. And they said, yep, we ought to do that. And they baptized them in Jesus' name. But Peter never one time mentioned baptism. He just preached Jesus. <laughs> Not one time did he mention that stuff. He just preached Jesus. Jesus is the one that led him to all that. It was just Jesus. And it worked, it worked for the Jews, it worked for the Samaritans, and it worked for the Gentiles. But, but here's the best part. It'll even work for religious folk. Because in Acts 19, when he met those disciples who were following John, John the Baptist, he said, man, have y'all received the Holy Ghost? They said, we, didn't, we haven't even heard about the Holy Ghost. What you talking about? 
And he said, man, you ought to get baptized in Jesus' name. And so the Bible says they were all rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And when they came out of the water, Paul laid hands on each of them. And they all prophesied and received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because when you see Jesus, it makes all the difference. Our job here at Truth Chapel is to preach Jesus. Oh, if I believe Jesus is who Jesus says he is, he'll clean you up. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll, he called me to be a fisher of men, not a cleaner of men. Now, come on, somebody. He said, I'll do the cleaning. You do the catching, boy. He said, you just bring them to me. Bring them to the altar. Bring them to Calvary. You bring them to Calvary, and I'll set them free. You Tell them to lift their eyes. Lift their eyes and see me. See me hanging on the cross for their sins, and I'll do the work in them. And today, I wonder... If you would bow your head and close your eyes, and would you look upon Jesus? As you're doing that, I'd like to open this altar today for anybody who would like to come and stand before your maker and lift your voice and call out the name of Jesus over your family, over your finances, over your life, over every struggle that you face. The answer today is Jesus. Look upon Jesus. Do you see him? Do you see him hanging on that cross? Do you see him with your sins squarely and firmly planted upon his shoulders? Do you see him carrying the cross that you should now carry every day of your life? Do you see him bearing the sins that you could not pay for? Do you see that dove? Do you see that dove being broken in an earthen vessel? And do you see the other dove who did nothing to deserve it? but is sprinkled with the blood of the dead dove and set free. Let him go. Oh, come on, the Lord has let you go today. You ought to be thankful that the blood is still at works. The blood still works. Would you come to this altar today and would you lift your voices and would you lift your hands? Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, come on. You may not even know what to pray today, but I want you just to speak the name of Jesus. Just speak the name of Jesus over your life. Speak the name of Jesus over your family. Speak the name of Jesus. it all over this building before we go home today you ought to speak the name of Jesus over your family speak the name of Jesus over your mind turn your eyes upon Jesus upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the thing
Lift your voice in this house and just call on the name of Jesus. Come on, are you glad you know who he is? Are you glad that one day somebody told you about Jesus? Are there any testimonies in the room that when I was lost and dying and going to hell, but somebody told me Jesus loved me? being in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for letting me preach to your spirit today. I know we didn't go deep today, theological, and we didn't, you know, maybe this is a simple message for some of you, but I've been in church for a long time, and I've been walking this walk for a long time, but I still get excited when I hear about the name of Jesus, the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus. There's something about that name. Sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb. Yes, it is. Amen. So thankful for you and so thankful for what we feel in the house. And if you are a first-time guest today, I would love to meet you. If you go out the door to my right, your left, the back double doors, make a quick left and a quick right. You'll see the little sign there for our first time guests. Come see me. Come meet me. I want to give you a gift and tell you how thankful we are to have you. Aren't we so grateful to have all of our guests with us at True Chapel today? Amen. Amen. Don't forget this Wednesday night, this Wednesday night business meeting pep rally. Wear, wear your jerseys, wear your, all, all your sports stuff. We're going to have a good time in the house on Wednesday night celebrating what the Lord has done. Amen. Would you stretch your hands towards me? I pray that when you leave from this house that God would cause his face to shine down upon you and give you favor with God and man. I pray that he would prosper you and protect you, lead you and guide you and order your steps. I bless you. I bless your family, your finances, your children, your home. I bless you with health, happiness, and abundance. And I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Leave this house today and walk in the favor of the Lord. I pray it over you now in Jesus' precious holy name. Won't you greet somebody before you leave today? Tell them you love them. Yeah. Oh. Something 